Hey everyone, this video is part of a two-part series with a fellow YouTuber called Beautiful Science who makes some very awesome science animation videos here on YouTube. The link to his channel will be in the description and comment section below. Elon Musk and his master plan of creating a self-sustaining city on Mars with SpaceX are well underway. With budgets that are the envy of NASA, teams of scientists working around the clock, and prototypes of his fleet of spacecrafts designed to take us there, including the Starship, are in the testing phase. A manned mission around the moon is due to take place in 2023 as a stepping stone for his ambitious galactic quest. Let's find out more about how SpaceX is planning to achieve this. To start, we should ask the question, why SpaceX and why Mars? SpaceX was founded on the 6th of May 2002, and since then it has continually pushed the boundaries of what is possible for spaceflight in a remarkably short time span. Landing rockets, using nets to catch fairings from space, the part that protects the satellite during launch, and relaunching the same landed rockets. Not only does SpaceX have the drive, they are also producing results, and as we will see, the hardware for a Mars mission is already being constructed and tested. Also, why are we going to Mars? Mars is a very likely candidate to be a long-term second home for humanity, given a few planetary tweaks. While the Moon is closer, it cannot hold an atmosphere like Mars could. And while Venus has a similar amount of gravity to Earth, burning temperatures, sulfuric acid clouds and crushing pressures make it an extremely hostile planet. On the other hand, Mars has a day length of 1 day and 37 minutes, very similar to ours. It has 38% the gravity of Earth, which is more than the Moon at 16%, and its temperatures resemble the coldest points on Earth. So while Mars is challenging, this does not mean it's impossible. So what is SpaceX doing to meet this Martian mission challenge? To get there, SpaceX is developing a rocket called Starship, which is a two-stage rocket made up of an upper secondary stage, also called Starship, and a booster called Super Heavy. Starship has undergone several redesigns throughout the years. Originally called the Mars Colonial Transporter, the Interplanetary Transportation System in 2016, the Big Falcon Booster in 2017, and finally Starship in 2018. When built, Starship will be the tallest rocket ever built at 118 meters. With 35 powerful Raptor engines and 9 meters in diameter, it will be capable of delivering 100 tons to Mars, which to put into perspective, is the equivalent of 22 and a half fully grown elephants. However, the plan to reach Mars is not dependent on the power of the rocket, but rather the cost. Imagine, if you will, boarding an aeroplane from New York to London, and once arriving at London, dismantling the plane instead of boarding for a new one for the return. The cost of a ticket would be much more expensive. Instead of using single-use rockets, having Starship as a multi-use rocket dramatically lowers the cost of a Mars mission, to the point where it is possible for a private company to reach the Red Planet. So when can we expect to reach the Red Planet? Let's draw up a timeline for the next six years. For the remainder of this year, SpaceX is testing prototype vehicles called the Starhopper and the Starship Mark I. Starhopper is a small prototype of the second stage, Starship, which conducted three hops up to 150 meters in height with the intention of testing out the components in a simple flight. With the objectives of the Starhopper complete, suborbital flights to truly test the Starship system are the next step. A 20 km flight is scheduled to commence around the end of this year. By next year, it is likely that a prototype booster, Super Heavy, will be built and launched. Both parts, Starship and Super Heavy, will also need to have orbital flights by this time to be on track for an announced first commercial mission in 2021. This also means that a full stack, meaning both Super Heavy and Starship combined, mission could take place by 2020. By 2021, the first commercial mission will also likely take place. After reports of SpaceX being in talks with three different telecom companies, a satellite launch would be a great proof of concept mission. When asked whether SpaceX would focus on the Moon or Mars first, Elon responded with Moon first. So we can expect that by 2022, in preparation for the first crewed lunar mission, the first uncrewed Starship mission to the Moon will take place. The first commercial destination for humans will be the Moon in 2023. This will be the first manned lunar journey since 1973 with Japanese billionaire Yusaku Mezawa heading the team of six to eight yet-to-be-confirmed specially selected artists, dubbed as some of Earth's greatest talents. The plan is to fly the Starship 384,400 kilometers to the Moon, encircle it and fly safely back to Earth. SpaceX are looking to set off in the year 2024 to coincide with Earth being in close proximity to Mars. 
The first mission will serve both as a proof of concept and as an opportunity to set up the vital first steps of the manned Mars base, such as dropping supplies, scouting the landing zone, deploying probes, and testing life support systems. The following year, 2025, would see preparations for a manned mission ramp up, and in 2026, the first manned mission would be launched aboard Starship. Starship with its crew will blast out of the atmosphere, attached to Super Heavy. They will then detach, and Super Heavy will return to Earth to use again as the Starship sets off to Mars. Accomplishing and surviving the journey will surely prove to be one of humanity's greatest ever challenges. Humans have never travelled this far before, so we can theorise but know little of the true impact on health this will have. Let's have a look at the main issues the astronauts will face on their quest. Our bodies are adapted to live with the precise gravity that is present on Earth. But once we leave our planet, the gravity in space will be near non-existent. And unlike futuristic sci-fi films, where passengers walk around spacecrafts like they would on Earth, they will in fact be weightless and floating the entire journey. This will cause muscle loss and the human skeleton to deteriorate with reduced bone density at 1% per month. Astronauts will need to eat well and exercise regularly to stifle most of the worst of these effects. Vision problems are also an issue, as fluids in the body shift upwards towards the head, putting pressure on the eyes. The crew will be essentially locked in a small stainless steel vehicle for the whole journey, and for longer than we have ever experienced. You will not be able to go outside for a break for some fresh air, that's for sure. In NASA's experience, no amount of training can stop inevitable friction and behavioural issues from occurring. Heavy work periods and long periods of boredom contribute to the overall isolation of space, with mood, morale and interpersonal interaction all affected. Circadian rhythms will be thrown off as there will not be any familiarity of a day cycle from day to night as on Earth, which can lead to sleep disorders. All of this combined will test team performance and could jeopardize the success of the mission if not addressed. Our advice? Mario Kart Marathon and hug it out, yeah? Radiation Space may seem like a vast void of emptiness with no major obstacles to overcome on the actual journey. But out of our protective atmosphere, the cosmos is full of invisible, supercharged particles of radiation that will not turn you green like the Hulk, but would penetrate you like tiny bullets, ripping through and breaking your cells and DNA. There are two main types of radiation to deal with here, which are solar energetic particles and galactic cosmic rays GCR. GCR is radiation that comes in from outside our solar system, most likely originating from gigantic supernova explosions elsewhere in the Milky Way. They journey over millions of years, traveling at the speed of light. They will not bounce off a spacecraft in its path, but will pass straight through it. And no spacesuit can shield against them, so they will rip right through humans on an atomic scale with devastating effects over time. Earth's magnetosphere shields us from the heaviest amount of this radiation, with levels of radiation being anywhere from 100 to 1,000 times higher in deep space. This can cause sickness in space, increase the risk of degenerative diseases, central nervous system defects, and lifetime risks of cancer. So it's imperative to keep travel time down to a minimum to minimize radiation exposure. Radiation from the sun is even more of a worry, Whereas GCR is generally a consistent amount of low yet dangerous radiation, the Sun can unexpectedly give off explosive amounts of radiation in the form of solar energetic particles and coronal mass injections. Coronal mass injections are injections of superheated plasma from the Sun's corona, which is the outer part of the Sun's atmosphere. These are caused by twisted magnetic fields on the Sun and can result in a billion tons of matter being spewed out into space at speeds of a million miles per hour, generally hurtling in every direction in the form of radiation and geomagnetic storms. The Sun has quiet and active periods. During quiet periods, you might expect one a week, and multiple events a day during active periods. CMEs are often accompanied by solar flares, which are both associated with the release of solar energetic particles. These are high-energy particles of protons, electrons, and heavy ions, which travel up to 80% of the speed of light. At this speed, they could travel from the Sun to a spacecraft on the way to Mars within a couple of hours, potentially damaging onboard equipment as well as exposing astronauts to dangerously high doses of radiation. Elon Musk has said in emergencies, Water can be used as a solar storm shelter, which would involve creating a layer of water as a barrier to soak up most of the radiation. 
but water will be heavy and expensive to launch. So along with the other dangers presented here, let's wait and see what SpaceX will come up with to ensure as safe as possible passage for its crew and cargo. By the time of launch, we will expect Starship to be ready for every eventuality. So with every test, every prototype constructed, and every announcement made, we are one more step closer to an exciting future in space. So what do you think of SpaceX's mission to reach Mars? Will they be the first, or will someone else get there before them? Leave your thoughts below, and be sure to check out Beautiful Science's channel. Click on the link on the screen here, or in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching.